Welcome to NAFA's Advisor Today podcast series, where we focus on how financial advisors work, live, and give to their local communities and our greater financial services industry. Now, let's get started with the show. Hi, everyone. This is Chris Candy, um, one of your co-hosts for Advisor Today's podcast with my wonderful co-host, Suzanne Kirawan. Suzanne, how are you? I'm good, Chris. Great to be here. Wonderful. Um, we're so excited to be here. It's been a little bit of time since we've had an opportunity to bring a wonderful podcast, um, a new and a fresh podcast. So we look forward to our today's episode. So Suzanne, who's the sponsor for today's episode? So Lara Galloway is our guest today and also White Glove is our sponsor. So she's kind of like a twofer package, right? In doing that. And so today's podcast, we're going to learn all about White Glove. If you're an advisor out there and don't know it, uh, I know I was out, Chris, in your realm just two weeks ago in Chicagoland. And of course you were in Ireland, so we completely missed each other, of course. But um, I was able to talk to many of our advisors we had at, at the Success Summit about White Glove. And it's such a no-brainer. I'm going to let Lara tell us about that, but it was such a no-brainer. People couldn't believe they weren't actually using this as part of their marketing. So we're just going to kind of queue it up with that and then uh, get into getting to know Lara because she she herself is a uh, quite an expert at dealing with, um, I shouldn't say dealing with, counseling, educating, right? Working with advisors to help them make more money. And that's what we're here to do. That's that's what it's all about. What it's all about. So, um, Miss Laura, how are you today? I am doing great. Just freezing in Michigan again. But other than that, I'm doing great. Thank you guys for having me on the show today. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us today on our, our wonderful podcast. You know, where we where we feature some of the top talent and some of the most influential people in the insurance and financial service market space. And so with that being said, um, let's kind of kick this off, shall we? The white glove. Huh? I mean, the concept itself kind of says a lot. But um, when I hear the word white glove, I think of special treatment. So what is it that um, what is it that white, you know, we've heard it around the industry. What does white glove actually do? And then what is it that you do at White Glove that really help bring it to an advisor so it become effective and efficient for us? The thing that White Glove does, and I love that you said, you know, you kind of already have a little connotation. You've heard about it a little bit. But what we want you to think of when you hear the word White Glove is that it's all done for you. Kind of just things are taken care of. You don't have to sweat. You don't have to do all the work. You don't have to take all the risk. You don't have to be a whole bunch of things that you never signed up to be when you became an agent or an advisor. We do all of that for you. So when you think of White Glove, I'd love for you to think of done for you, but done for you what? Okay. So we do financial education workshops and we do a lot of marketing. We are lead gen. And when I met with Suzanne last week in Columbus and got to attend one of the fabulous events and got to meet some of the representatives and the NAFA members there and I got to hear some really amazing conversations about what people are doing to advocate on behalf of their clients and also some of the things that they were struggling with. And what one of the things that you said you hear all the time, Suzanne, and I agree, we hear it all the time, too, is, you know, these these advisors and planners and agents, they're doing great work if they can just get in front of the right people. And how do you get more leads? It's a struggle. I mean, you, you, if you're out there, you're hustling, you're talking to everybody you know in your community, you're asking for referrals from friends and family, but that's not enough. And it's not a way for a growth-minded advisor or agent to actually build a book of business that is sustainable and is going to get them probably where they need to be. So you need some sort of lead generation tools. And that's where we work with advisors and agents. We are all about getting you in front of a room full of qualified prospects that can benefit from hearing your expertise. We want to put you in front of the room, make you the expert, and then that's when we do all the work and we take all the risk comes into play because you're an agent, you're an advisor, you have certifications, you've studied, you've gotten credentials. You need to be doing your work. And when you are instead trying to figure out how to post an ad on Facebook, how to organize an event, how to call a venue, make sure they have a big enough room, make sure it's available, pay the insurance, make sure the room is set up the right way, get the reservation. 
then do all the marketing, put up a landing page, have people sign up, call them, confirm with them. Yay, Suzanne, you're registered. Can't wait to see you next Tuesday night. Here's a map. Here's a way to get there. Here's, here's where to go once you arrive at the building. Like all that stuff, that's what we do. So we do all of the event planning and all of the marketing for a financial education workshop. That's what White Love's all about. So those of you who don't know, Laura Galloway has spent 12 years in her own coaching and consulting business, and she's the SVP, uh, Senior Vice President of Financial Education at White Glove. Um, she's dedicated her life to educating and helping others uh, meet their uh, personal and financial goals. Um, so with that being said, um, Ms. Laura, tell us, how did you get started in your, in your business? Because you, you kind of wear two hats. Right. I mean, you, you, you coaching and consulting and then white glove. Like, how do you, you know, how did you get started? Yeah. You're always so, interested in that story. It, you know, it's funny because we all have a lot of different things that we've done in our lives. And I, I've kind of had a few different careers at this point. Um, I started out working at IBM when I was 19 and I did sales and public relations and communications with them for about 10 years. And then my husband and I decided to start a family and I left White Glove, but I was really antsy and needed to do something with my skills. And so I found my way to business and life coaching. And so I did a year long coaching and leadership program that helped me really figure out how to help other people get what they wanted in a nutshell. And a lot of that was focused around really powerful communication, understanding how we show up to other people and getting to be intentional about that so that we can then have really good personal connections. And so in my coaching business, I focused on women entrepreneurs. My, co my company is Mom Biz Coach, and I ran it for 12 years where I helped women who were the head of a family also run being the head of a business and all of the conflict that came in, in that place. And so everything that I did pretty much, Chris, was virtual. I built a business using webinars and back in the day, Skype <laughs> and good old conference calling. And I built out my own brand websites. Um, I did 300 podcast episodes back in the day. I coached people all over the US, Canada, all over actually. And I built a pretty big business. I attracted a lot of sponsors. So I had to work with sponsors and I had to learn all about marketing. And I helped people build businesses from the ground up, from concept to exit. And that experience, I did that and I, and I enjoyed it so much. But as my kids got older and they went back to school and didn't need me as more, which is part of why I left like, or left IBM was I needed the flexibility of running my own company. So having been an entrepreneur, I can really relate to financial advisors and agents who are your entrepreneurs, you're building your own book of business, right? And understanding what it takes to market and effectively keep that pipeline full and to always be converting more people and always taking care of our clients. When I did that for 12 years, I learned a lot, but then my kids grew up and went back to school and didn't need me as much anymore. I needed to do something else where I continued learning. And so I reached out and found a couple of friends that I just said, I need the next step. I'm not sure what my next act is going to be. And I ended up interviewing with White Glove and started out doing business development for White Glove. And we've always been working with financial advisors. But my goal here was to help us bring in different topics for financial advisors, you know, and, and different verticals. Maybe we can work with, I started working with estate planning attorneys. Maybe we could work with accountants. Maybe we could work with uh, real estate agents and mortgage lenders. And, you know, so that was part of my role. And I've evolved over the five years. I've done one of everything at White Glove, maybe even two, where I've led departments from uh, business development to product to marketing, and I've done some special products, projects in our financial wellness industry, and now I'm back in biz dev and client relations, so that's a lot. <laughs> but what has really happened for me is I've been able to use my skills as an entrepreneur and my ability to learn how to connect with audiences, take all of the coaching experience that I have, coach our advisors here at White Glove, and help them figure out how to get better in a nutshell. I've created a ton of best practices guides because when we, you know, everybody, we used to do exclusively seminars at White Glove before the pandemic. And then the pandemic hit and our revenue went to zero, absolutely zero. Every single public venue was shut down. 
that's where we did our workshops. We do public libraries, community centers, community colleges. We couldn't get into a single one. So we had to switch to webinars. And that, again, was one of my projects that I had to lead the company through because I had experience with those doing it in my own business. And I got to watch all these advisors who some of them knew exactly how to communicate and how to be effective relationship builders with their audience. And others did not. <laughs> and they did not in a big way. And uh, so I worked really hard to develop some programs that our team actually now teaches all of our advisors, whether you do a seminar with us in person or you do a webinar with us virtually, we teach you a lot of best practices so you can better connect with those prospects that we put in front of. Got it. Okay, that's that's pretty that's pretty interesting. So so you've been around the world and back um, with multiple opportunities and multiple platforms and. But I, I'll, 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 let me let me start from being a let me ask a question from a advisor's perspective. Fair. Yeah. So when is the right time to use White Glove? Because I've been in the business long enough to where I've trained and developed advisors, and one of the challenges all advisors have is what I call that that inner muscle, right? The ability for them to actually articulate who they are and what they do, and why it's a value in the marketplace, right? And um, it takes us being an extrovert when we may naturally be introverts. There's the coaching part of it, right? And so how, when is the right time to engage a, a white glove, right? You know, so it doesn't hamper the skill development or the fundamentals that I may need to learn. What is the right time? And then how do I go about engaging with, with white glove or potentially talking with you about, hey, coach me up. I want to be the best version of me. Yeah. I, I just want to pause for a second, Chris, because you said something I think that's really, really so impactful. And it's that, yeah, a lot of people per perceive if I'm going to get out there and, and build my business, I have to be a salesperson. I have to be an extrovert. But I really, I'm an introvert. I just want to say there that's such an important point because not everybody can just be something they're not. And we have advisors who, like, they're, I'm just going to say it, they're a little nerdy. They're a little uncomfortable in front of a group. They actually don't like public speaking at all. And I've worked with them and said, look, we're going to just use that to your advantage because you know what you are? You're relatable. And you don't have to be magnanimous. You don't have to be an amazing presenter. What you actually have to be is a warm and friendly person because what are we asking these people that are sitting in your workshop to do? We're asking for them to trust you with their biggest financial decisions, with so much that's going to impact their life and their family and the community's lives. You have to be a likable, knowable, trustworthy person. And if you're a little awkward, that's okay. People will accept that. If you know your stuff, but you're kind, you're friendly and relatable, you got a lot going for you. So just want to address that with the extrovert versus introvert, because I don't want anybody listening to the to go, oh, I'm not a public speaker. Or, oh, I'm an introvert. I could never do that. White gloves, not for me. That's that's you're, you're thinking of it the wrong way. We've helped so many people who actually do struggle putting themselves out there, selling themselves. Let us do that for you. Really? So when do people use us? We have. Several different, in marketing lingo, they're called avatars. So several different kinds of clients. At, and they're at different stages in the life cycle. So you mentioned, Chris, that you are you know, very established. You're coaching and training up some advisors. That's actually one of our avatars, is an established advisor who's probably been in business between 15, 25, 30 years, and is still growth-minded. Let me just say this. The, the one unique piece across it all is any kind of person that comes to us is growth-minded. They're not waiting for referrals. They're not done. They're not just you know coasting until retirement. They know that the value of their book of business will only go down if they take their foot off the gas. So if they are hoping to exit soon, they're still growth-minded because they know that they want that book of business to be valued better and that whoever they're passing it down for their succession plan is going to really benefit from that book. So. Growth-minded advisors is number one. If you're not growth-minded, and some aren't, and that's fine, then probably you're going to look for white club. So growth-minded to start. But let's say you're in the business and you are 
you know, you're getting ready to exit. You're looking at the next step. You're looking at retirement and you want to boost that book of business. Maybe you've brought on some juniors, some sub reps. Maybe you've expanded your team. Maybe you've gotten another office. Whatever it is, maybe you've expanded to another state because you've got your retirement home, you're back and forth. Whatever that is, those advisors often hire us. And a lot of times, in fact, one of the gentlemen I spoke with um, when we were in Columbus, and I'll just call him Tom and not give a last name, but he was telling me kind of a similar relationship to what you just said, Chris. He's like, I, I'm the champion. I'm the leader. I'm the president, the owner. And I have these younger juniors that I'm bringing into my business. I'm a better speaker. I bring that confidence. But I want to be able to pass these leads to them. I want them to grow these leads. So how do I do that? How do I be the person in the front of the room, but transfer it to others? And I said, let's talk. We've got so many advisors doing that exact model and it works really well. I'll tell you how to do it. Then we have other advisors who are, maybe they have broken away from a big wire house or a big broker dealer or a big agency and they've gone out on their own and they're looking to expand and grow that book of business really quickly. And those people, they could be individual contributors. Maybe they just have an assistant and their partner or their spouse is helping them out. That is also very common. I will tell you generally, though, it is people who know that this is a sales cycle and understand that they are, they, they're kind of wanting to continue farming and continue getting more and more leads in their pipeline. They're also individuals who understand marketing automation and a great CRM is going to serve them well. Because if you pay me money to get the leads that I deliver to this workshop, and then you don't follow up with them for the rest of their lives, you're missing out. You're wasting money. So it, it, it can go across the spectrum. It's, it's individuals up to groups. And some of our biggest groups are some of the you know, independent broker dealers and the FMOs out there, IMOs. We are partnered with a lot of them, and they send a lot of their people to us. And we appreciate that because we provide all that extra coaching and stuff. So it's a it's a practice management development tool for those FMOs and IMOs as well and RIAs. So, so as a marketer, you know, one of the hats, I, I don't know that I've ever articulated this, but as a head of marketing at NAFA, one of my jobs, I kind of think is like being a personal shopper for our, <laughs> for our <laughs> members and trying to find really good tools to help them get that ROI. So I'm going to cut to the chase because you actually have a set of Laura, and that is that Here's the thing, Chris, I could not believe the more I learned about the white glove model. Like I kept having to say, let's go through it again. Let's go. Like, so what's my upfront cost for an advisor? And the upfront cost for an advisor is zero. And so like they've taken completely the risk off the table, which is typically which advisors, you know, that's going to be the big blocking point. So they'll take you on. You, they'll do it. You're only paying for the people that actually really show up in the room. Isn't that right? That's how it works. So to me, that's like a no brainer. So I'm like, so hold, let me get this again. I'm going to go in and I'm going to do a retirement workshop, right? I'm going to, I get to go in and speak. White Glove's going to handle getting butts in seats, doing all the marketing, getting the people there. All I have to do is do what I do and then take the leads and then pay them for that. It's like, yeah, well, I mean, we'll pay, we'll research and find the venue that meets your criteria. We'll consult with you on the greatest pockets of wealth in the area that you're looking for. I mean, we're a marketing company. We have so much data, Suzanne. So we bring that data to the table for all of our, our hosts. We call them a workshop host. And we give you that advice. So we'll say, hey, you know, this is good. But if you move three miles northeast, there's a lot more people out here that you could reach. And I think that could be really beneficial for you. So we do all that advising. We do all that the, the consulting for you. We book the venue. We pay the venue fee. I mean, they're cheap places, three, $35 to maybe 200 for a room rental, right? Because we're not doing big hotels and steak dinners. We're doing all educational places. And that that branding helps you. It's, it's educational and brand. So people expect an education, not a pitch. And then we'll even pay the insurance. You don't have to cover the, we, we do all of that. So we pay all of that up front. We need about five to six weeks lead time to find and book a place and get your workshop on the books. You prep, you show up, you present. The day after your event, you pay us for who attends. So we consider attendees is a buying unit. We call it a household. So if there, if if you wanted 20 people and 20 people show up, you pay us the day after your event for 20 people. If you wanted 20 people 
and uh, a snowstorm hit or a hurricane or a pandemic, <laughs> that's been crazy. Um, but if one of those things happens and say only three people show up, you pass for three people, okay? If nobody shows up, if the facility gets struck by lightning and we have to rebook your event, you pay zero and we rebook your event and you pay for the people who show up for that. So that's pretty so, crazy. You disrupted the industry with that business model for sure. Yeah. So you you said that basically it's a no-brainer. That's essentially what you're just you're describing to us. There are no no-brainers. So what's the downside? Everybody wants to know there's a catch to it. So what yeah. is the what is the downside? See, that's what I keep trying to, to find out to too. Like what's the downside? I keep I'm picking at her, like, come on, there must be something, right? Why would yeah. someone not do this? Yeah. So funny. So people say, um, that's just crazy. I don't know how you can stay in business. And it's like, well, we've been around since 2015 and we're founded by financial advisors who built their business doing this. And the whole thing that people say you can't stay in business because you're not accepting money up front. Don't you just get ghosted? Nope, we don't. We're doing great. But I, I would say if there's any downside, the key is not being prepared to handle those leads. So if we get you, you know, if you wanted 20 people and 20 people show up and you host your event on Tuesday and then you know, Tuesday at the end of May, and then on Friday, you and your family leave for a two week vacation. That's bad. That's bad thinking. That's bad timing because you actually, the downside is you need to build time in your calendar for the, at least the next two weeks to strike while the iron's hot. So you have to be willing to invest that time to meet with these people that signed up on your calendar because they attended your workshop and said, yeah, I wanna learn more. So just make sure if there's anything I've seen advisors do wrong, it's not doing those follow-ups and not making time to follow up with those people after the workshops. Yeah, and, and I think we were talking about this too. It's it's the um you mentioned kind of that life cycle, and then I'd love for Chris to weigh in on that. But it's not just a one and done. It's not like, hey, I just followed up with you one time. You have to have at least a three to four to month cycle and continue to grow these people and have reasons to reach out. And I think a lot of times what I see is that people are like, well, they didn't respond so next, right? Because they don't enjoy the process. They don't enjoy the process of cultivating those leads and kind of doing the lead nurturing. And so then they just want it to be, you know, and and instead it, you should look at it as like, what a great reason to constantly now continue to send that education to them, right? To send more, you know, hey, here's a helpful article, whatever the case might be, to try to cultivate that relationship, to turn it into, you know, a, a new client. Absolutely. And I mean, the, the good news is I almost heard the words done for you. You said they don't want to do that. They want it. And then I was expecting you to say done mm -hmm. for you. Um, and we do do it for you. If you host an event with us, part of your fee that you pay, again, only after the event, is we will include a 45-day conversion campaign for every event that we do for you. What a conversion campaign is, Suzanne, is it's a 45-day cadence of emails, phone calls, text messages, very specific, all not burdensome, not crazy, very Hey, Suzanne, thanks so much for attending the workshop. Or even we'll segment your list for the no-shows that we give you as well. Hey, Suzanne, sorry you weren't able to make it to the workshop. You know what? Laura's still willing to meet with you and answer your questions one-on-one. -on -one. Would you like to schedule a time on her calendar? We do it for you. The people have said, oh, I'm going to have to hire a call center. We're like, no, you don't. We'll do it. We have the call center. We do that. We will reach out for 45 days after your event trying to get people to book on your calendar. And all of our advisors say that they are getting, you know, maybe two or three appointments that are coming just from the conversion campaigns. No more cost to you at all. And then if after that, if you love that idea and you really are looking for some marketing automation solutions, we do have them where we will drip on email. We'll do email drips, email newsletters, email campaigns, social media posting, Every, I mean, everything, we'll set up everything for you. We'll customize it, do it all for you. We'll do that for every lead you have. I don't care where you bought them, where you got them at, whatever's in your database, we will do that for you. And that is a simple fee that can be paid monthly or yearly. That is $3,600 total for the year. We call that nurture and engage. So wherever you got leads from, 
you need to be staying on top of mind and sending them that good content, like you just mentioned, showing that thought leadership. Otherwise, they're listening to your competitor. You can be sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Laura, how do we get started? How do we get started with Yeah, so I'm going to give a link to you guys that you can share on your podcast page. Suzanne, it's the landing page that we have for you guys because every NAFA member that comes through this link is automatically eligible for a discount and our silver palladium program, which gives them a discount off the households every for every workshop they ever do. And it also gives them a status we call silver palladium, which has a lot of perks, including attending our live event, which is uh, the registration is completely waived for you and a guest. So you definitely want to take advantage of that. You fill in this form and it's just your name, your email, your phone number, your company, whatever it is. And then we will reach out to you. You'll automatically get the NAFA discount of that $5 off just because you're a NAFA member. So I'll send that to you guys so you guys can get started. And then we'll connect you through that form. You're going to get connected to an executive marketing consultant. That's what we call their sales team because they're marketing consultants. They're helping you figure out where to do your marketing. And they can get you set up in about five to six weeks for your workshop. That's great. So, hey, can we can we backtrack a little bit, Lara? And I want to kind of go back to kind of your life coaching plus your advising piece and say, I, I, our listeners love to kind of know uh, top, you know, sales tips and tricks, right? So hit us with like top three things you wish advisors were kind of doing now that they don't know that they could be doing to be more effective. Or you could go the other way and say three things you see all the time that they're they're doing that kind of hurting them, right? Yeah. Well, the uh, we do see a lot of advisors out there who are saying, you know what? I know workshops are effective. I mean, it's lead generation on demand. When do you need leads? Eh, I really want to pump things up in August and September. Okay, host a workshop. You'll get leads, period. We guarantee it, right? So We give you the leads. All right, so maybe you're doing that on your own. Maybe you're already doing these sorts of things. Some of the mistakes we see people make is choosing the wrong topic. They just, they don't really know what topic resonates. Like, um, hey, anybody want to do a workshop on annuities? Yeah, if I had a nickel, no, a penny, a half penny for every advisor or agent who comes to me and says, I want to do a workshop on annuities. And we're like, sorry, friend. Nobody wants to come to a workshop about annuities. We've tried. We have tested that topic a million ways to Sunday. But we do know what topics will bring in people who absolutely will buy annuities products from you. And let us teach you how to use those topics to get those clients. So I see people out there using the wrong topic or the like they just can't get people to show up. That's why when they hear us, they're like, oh, my God. I don't even have to pay for it. And you guarantee people will show up so I don't have to walk into a room of one person and feel like my soul just got crushed. We're like, yeah, we can help you out with that. So the number one thing is choosing the right topic. The topics that don't play well, annuities does not play well. It just doesn't. Life insurance does not. You have to call it something different. People will not come generally. It's very hard to get them to sign up. Um, we recommend topics like social security, deals to the masses. Everybody's got it. Talk to them about Social Security because they know what. So when they're awake at night wondering, is my Social Security going to run out? If you have a workshop called Social Security and will your Social Security last, then they're going to sign up. Okay, so we've learned, we have split tested our marketing, every font, every word, every picture on every marketing page we've ever done to the cows come home. Split testing just means trying one variable versus another to see which performs better. And by performs better, I mean people register for it and people show up for it. So your topic is absolutely critical to get right. We know Social Security, taxes and retirement. A lot of people don't know that's that's a topic out there you see a lot. White Glove created that. Our founders absolutely created that topic. So now there are very di- various different vendors using it. That's our topic we created. And then estate planning, which crazy enough, every advisor, every agent should be doing because You are not an attorney. You are not creating documents, but you're doing estate planning strategy every day. The products and services that you're selling are all about preserving an estate and making that transfer of wealth down from one group to another as positively impactful and not the negative tax implications and stuff like that. So all of this stuff, these are the topics that I think are so important. 
So definitely the first thing is picking the right topic, not using fear mongering. Okay. The second thing that I see people doing that they really don't need to do is steak dinners. Guys, I get it. I still get probably, I, I'm 52, a woman of a certain age. I get my post box, box shoved full of these things. I get flyers all the time from people that want to feed me every night of the week. Okay. I can afford my own steak, but why wouldn't I go eat somebody else's steak dinner? I mean, it's fantastic. You don't have to do that. You're an educator. You are an amazing, you're a subject matter expert. And people need to hear what you have to say. They're desperate for it. They're staying up at night. They can't sleep. They're so worried about their finances and their future and whatever it is that they're worried about. You show up and you be a warm, friendly presenter for them. You've got it. People, you answer their questions. You don't have to give a steak dinner. You can if you want to. We it's have to people love it. It's so far. I, I didn't even think about that, but you're right. As I as you get to a certain age, the the, the volume of AARP plus mm-hmm. steak dinner, right? It's unbelievable now that you say that. There was one that came the other day. Here's a here's a topic you shouldn't have either. So you definitely need to know, like you're sending it to me. I'm a marketer. It literally said from wedding to widowhood, getting oh. ready for the next stage of your life. That's what that was the topic of the steak dinner. And I was like, oh my <laughs> right. Like, no. Who goes to that? I thought, who goes to that, right? Who goes yeah. to that, yeah. Well, and that's that's the challenge when you're doing it your own and you're not a marketing expert like we are, okay? This is what I mean. Like, we've taken all the lumps. We've tried all the horrible topics. I promise you we have. And there's some that work and some that don't. So the third big mistake I would share, and I think this is so important, guys, don't pitch. Just don't do it. I don't care if you just got back from your carriers conference and you are so stoked. I, again, if I had a penny for the amount of time, oh, we got a product like no other. Nobody else on the market has it. It's exclusive. It's so great. Guys, if you walk into a room full of people who are laying awake at night, wondering if their money's going to run out, if they're laying awake at night, trying to figure out what to do with their daughter who just got divorced and is in a messy battle and you're trying to figure out how to pass some things down. If you've got a family business, if you, whatever it is, whatever these clients are doing with you, if that's why they show up, people show up in these workshops because of a life event, because they are humans. Okay. They are humans who just experienced a life event, marriage, divorce, layoff, job change, new business, whatever it is. They're showing either that just happened It's about to happen or it's going to happen in the future, okay? You need to connect with them on life events. If you walk in trying to tell them about how high you are on this fabulous product that you just got back from the big Titans club and you're the winner and, and, oh my, you're just alienating the hell out of people. Don't pitch yourself. Don't ever pitch a product in a workshop. Never, ever. And you may think, well, Well, how am I going to get clients then? By being a warm, friendly educator who is very knowledgeable about all the things that these people are struggling with in their lives, all the dreams and goals they have, and then making sure that you know, you communicate with them. Yeah, actually, there are some great life insurance products that can be used for these sorts of things. Be happy to talk with you about it. We can take a look and see which ones work best for you. However, Maybe you need to look at this, one, you know, X, Y, and Z. You don't pitch a product. You don't promote yourself. Do not waste their time promoting your firm. They are there for an education. Educate first. Now, when they sign up at the end of your pitch or during your workshop, you want to say, get rid of the word pitch. At the end of your workshop, if you want to say, you know what, this is, uh, it's been great talking to you guys today. I hope I've answered some of the questions that you've had. I know some of you have very specific questions and maybe some things that are pretty private that you don't want to disclose in a big group setting. That's fine. I'm taking one-on-one appointments. If you'd love to come into my office, I'd love to meet with you wherever you want to meet, virtual coffee, your office, my whatever is fine. I'll sit down with you and I'll go over those questions, complimentary one-on-one meeting, 30 minutes or an hour, you choose. And if there are, if I can answer your questions, they're great. If you have more questions and you're looking for some guidance, I'll be happy to explain to you how I work with people. That's it. When they show up for that appointment, now you can sell. 
I'd love to work with you. My clients say I'm the best. Here's what we do. Here's what we provide. Here's how my team works. We've been doing this for this many years. We offer these services, these products. Here are my fees. Would you like to work together? Absolutely, but don't do that in your workshop. You've given us a roadmap that kind of will offer us to be able to say, here are the, I think people need to take notes of this podcast, play it back and say, here are the don'ts. Because the odds are we probably do more of the don'ts to do to do. And then we need to engage you with White Club. I mean, what a great opportunity. Um, the partnership with NAFA, um, Suzanne, kudos to you for, for continuing to silly down this pipeline and putting together these meaningful relationships we've talked about. The NAFA is one of the great resources, but it's got a lot of hidden gems, resources that most of the advisors have never tapped into. So if you're out there, let's tap into the resources at, at, uh, at NAFA through um, Suzanne. What's the portal that people can look at some of the resources? Yeah, that, you just uh, need to go to our membership. Yep, just go to our members portal right at uh, members at NAFA.org. Log in and it's really newly redesigned. There's all sorts of good stuff in there. We're trying to help. Um, Bring that to light and let NAFA members know uh, how much how much is in there that is we're we're now really going and finding kind of like I said from that personal shopping standpoint we want of course our members to be the absolute best and to do the best so we're uh, putting all that together in an easy to find format. That's wonderful. So so Miss Laura, um, any final thoughts before we get to final Jeopardy? I mean, that's not Jeopardy. You know, Suzanne, they're going to take us off the air. Uh, final, our final <laughs> our round of questioning. Round. Um, yeah, I just would, I just want to say that you know we make it easy for you, even if you're not sure that you are a presenter, even if you've tried it a few times and it hasn't worked. Talk with us because we are very passionate about education, just like NAPA is for you guys. We are very passionate about educating you and making you better. And I mean, guys, what do you have to lose? Like, there's no risk to you. You're not going to put any money up front. And we don't make any money unless you are successful, unless we get those people to show up for you. And we, you know, we're going to guarantee registrations. We guarantee attendees. We guarantee appointments. And we guarantee a client. So the risk is removed. Give us a shot and know that we are going to provide best practices coaching we have coaches on hand that do work with all of our advisors and our hosts that want to level up their game. We have uh, educational events like our virtual summit coming up on June 7th. That is all, all industry giants that are sharing all of the things that our advisors are doing to do better and grow their business. We have host university, which is an in-person event in August. And we just, we go all in on education. We share that with you because our success is only related to yours. We're not making money and saying good luck to you. We don't make money unless you're successful. So we put our money where our mouth is and try to make sure that we educate you. So don't take yourself out of the running if you're thinking, ah, I don't know that I can do workshops. Give us a shot. Let us help you out. And I'd also just comment that White Glove is a frequent contributor to our Business Performance Center's blog and webinars. We've got some great content in there. They've got some great, you know, top tips for digital marketing and things to do. So it's, it's great to be able to have that. Um, it's some of our most consumed content comes from White Glove. So it's very popular. We're happy to be able to uh, share that with our membership. But Chris, I think it is time for the lightning round. I wish we had side. I wish we had sound effects. <laughs> right? The lightning. Yep. Um, so Laura, first of all, thanks for being here. Um, so, so this next round is simply a series of questions. Um, kind of brainstorming that comes first to mind. And so the key to this is you can't really think about it. You just have to answer the question, okay? So, so we've had some fun with some past guests and uh, Stump, a couple other guests. You know, at the end of the day, it's just so people can can feel relatable to you, right? So they, so they get to know you a little bit better. Is that fair? Sure. Okay, great. We'll start off something simple. You said you're, you're, you're are you in Michigan now? I am. Okay, so I have to ask the question. Are you a Spartan fan or the Maze and Blue? Not either. I don't do sports at all. Okay, great. Okay. That's a that's a great <laughs> that's a great neutral answer. That's the greatest answer I think we've heard of all time. <laughs> all right. So with that being said, here, here we that's go. why she drove down to um, Columbus, Ohio. So, she was able to drive into Columbus, Ohio and be in Buckeye Country because she didn't actually, you know. 
uh, relate to any of the other sports up in that state. No, <laughs> Did not spontaneously no, combust when I entered. No, <laughs> so, um, your favorite food? My favorite what? Your favorite food? Food? Oh, man. Chicken. <laughs> My husband can't stand it. Like, I grew up eating so much chicken. I'm a foodie. I love chicken i love so many different ways i can cook it it's so i i know it's not exciting but like i make it exciting i make chicken amazing i love chicken every single way i could possibly eat chicken i love chicken okay your your favorite place you visited in the last five years hmm. bozeman montana where my son is currently a freshman at school and dear god i want to move there with him he's living his best life um, we're big outdoors folks, so hiking, camping, kayaking, rafting. That's what I want to do. That's where I want to be. He's, I'm living vicariously through him. At White Glove today, if I was to choose a topic, what would be the topic that you say you have to be as part of the subject? Estate planning, the end. Estate planning, the end. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Um, last question. If you could go back in history and have dinner with one person in history that's either here today or no longer with us, who would it be and why? I think the person that pops up for me is Madame Curie. Um, just the idea of someone who just broke the mold and applied herself in a field that was dominated by men in a, in a scientific field and learned and made such a huge, valuable impact on people. I think, like, I just would love to hear what she did all day and what she thought and what her family life was like and, you know, what drove her, what her passions were, because that's, that just, I, I don't know people like that in my personal life. And so that would be just, I know a lot of business leaders, um, but talking to someone who had to, like, forge their way through science and find such amazing solutions for people, that would just be really cool to me. Last question. I had an extra question. Here's the question: If you could go back and give your 21 year old self advice, what would you give? What advice would you give yourself? Oh, for a 21 year old. Now that's fun because I have an almost 21 year old, and I would say stop with the imposter syndrome. Um, I got hired at IBM when I was 19 years old. And I can assure you, I developed a healthy imposter syndrome. I knew if there was no reason they should have hired me. There was no reason I should get to work with all those really smart and talented people. There was just any minute people were going to find out I was a phony. I was a fake. I didn't know what these people knew. I didn't fit with them. Um, I had a real hard time with that. And I think. When I see other youngsters out there, young adults that are forging their way in the world, I mean, it's a different world than when I went through it at 21. But just really knowing that what you bring to the table is, is your, like, it's, it's what you bring to the party. It's your set of ingredients, and it's not somebody else's. And not worrying that everybody thinks you're less than you are. But just being where you are, being okay with whatever knowledge, experience, uh, talents, and fears you have, that's, that's what I would have said. Because I spent a lot of time worrying about what other people think and being constantly worried that I wasn't good enough. Well, Miss Laura, you're definitely good enough for the Advisor Today podcast. We couldn't bring it home any better than that. Thank you for laying that up for us. Suzanne, do you have anything as we close out? No, just look forward to um, upcoming uh, events with White Glove and get, getting great content and doing more education together. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Ms. Laura, thank you for, for, the, for everything you do with our industry. You know, it's like-minded individuals like yourself who allow for this type of podcast for people to tap in and to get the resources necessary to help grow their business. Thanks all of you for listening to our podcast today. With my wonderful, my wonderful co-host Suzanne Carawan. Suzanne, the Thank chief you, 
the chief chief operating officer over there uh, operating uh, the podcast. And thanks all for listening where we come together and we collectively uplift and promote uh, the the industry and the and the services financial services industry collectively together where we as a group as an organization as NAPA as one NAPA are stronger together than we are apart so we'll see you next week same place same time thanks for being here we appreciate it thanks for joining us for NAPA's advisor today podcast series make sure to subscribe to get future episodes and if you're interested in coming on the show let us know